Welcome. Well, for the benefit of those who, who perhaps just dropping into this uh, this thought for the day or those who weren't around last Sunday, last Sunday at Westbury Park saw a mass online Christmas pudding making and stirring event. Celebrating, as it's the Sunday before Advent, stir up Sunday. Before the fasting begins, get those goodies into the Christmas pudding bowl. Advent is approaching, and how do we mark Advent normally? Normally, it's a lot different than how it is this year. Normally, there's a lot of more partying going on, for example. But we can still have the best gin Advent calendar in the world, if we want, or the best whiskey Advent calendar. I'm slightly more tempted by cheese Advent calendars, or even better, by the real Advent calendar. But it's a time when, as we pray and when we try to find an encounter God who is with us, a yearning. A yearning especially this year for freedom, redemption, salvation. It's a time of turning to God and turning God wards and opening our windows to God day by day as we await the coming King. But it all starts with an event, and it's an event full of mystery, wonder and strangeness. It's an event full of glory. An angel comes to Mary. How can this be? She says when she receives the promise. That world-transforming wonder of Mary's yes. This very young woman, pictured wonderfully in this particular Advent painting. This is the Annunciation. The poem today is by the American poet Denise Levitoff. The Annunciation to Mary and her response is full of strange symbolism. The church has received this symbolism over the years. Lilies, angels, the word written symbolising Mary's devotion. And the power of the incarnation. And God coming deeply to Mary as she receives it. And pretty terrifyingly, as this uh, well-known painting of the Annunciation by Rossetti depicts. recent years we've played heavily on the ordinary aspects of the Annunciation. The reality of Mary's youth, the reality of perhaps her poverty, the reality of the situation and her relationship with Joseph. Perhaps this year it's time to re-enchant the Annunciation, re-examine and relive the extraordinary nature of it the wonder in it, the aspects that are so other that we find it really hard to grasp. It's a moment of heaven in earth, a unique event in history, and enables each of us to wonder at Mary and her yes with strangeness. And allow ourselves, through our response of thanksgiving, to run to God in hope, in expectation, whether driven to our knees or with arms outstretched to receive 
the wonder. Here is the poem, The Annunciation, by Denise Merbatov. We know the scene. The room variously furnished, almost always a lectern, a book. Always the tall lily. Arrived on solemn grandeur of great wings, the angelic ambassador, standing or hovering, whom she acknowledges a guest. But we are told of meek obedience. No one mentions courage. The engendering spirit did not enter her without consent. God waited. She was free to accept or refuse, choice integral to humanness. Aren't there other enunciations of one sort or another in most lives? Some unwillingly undertake great destinies, enact them in sullen pride, uncomprehending. More often, those roads of light and storm open from darkness in a man or woman and are turned away from in dread, in a wave of weakness, in despair, and with relief. Ordinary lives continue. God does not smite them, but the gates close. The pathway vanishes. She had been a child who played, ate, slept like any other child, but unlike others, wept only for pity laughed in joy, not triumph, compassion and intelligence fused in her, indivisible. Called to a destiny more momentous than any in all of time, she did not quail, only asked a simple, how can this be? And gravely, courteously, took to heart the angel's reply perceiving instantly the astounding ministry she was offered. To bear in her room infinite weight and lightness. To carry in hidden finite inwardness the nine months of eternity. To contain in slender vase of being the sum of power in narrow flesh the sum of light, then bring to birth, pushed out into air, a man-child, needing, like any other, milk and love. But who was God? Reading from the book of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, in the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of this kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me, according to your word. 
You see, we can be encountered by the risen God in a moment, even in the midst of the most 